Hi everyone, welcome and namaste to all. Uh, I'm Pamalka Manjita Karunanayak from Sri Lanka, the director of uh, Sasani Institute for Music. And uh, today is our first day of doing a Facebook live interview. Uh, we named it as Journey because we are uh, having uh, international artists and great musicians uh, discussing about their musical journey and how they uh, became great musicians and their experience and wisdom uh, they will share with us. Uh, I think this will be a good opportunity to, to uh, students and uh, music lovers to uh, embrace and uh, continue with their music. So I invite uh, Srimati Kala Ramnath ma'am uh, to our interview today. Namaste. Namaskar. Namaste ma'am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You're doing good ma'am. During this pandemic time, uh, this is the best way I think to share our music and our knowledge with yes. the world. Yes. So, uh, as the director of uh, the Sasan Institute for Music, I welcome you to our first Facebook Live interview uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka. Thank you. And uh, this is the first time that I'm doing an interview with an international artist on Facebook. Uh, and with your help and guidance, I managed to do it. So I hope everybody will uh, get to know more about music and everything. So shall we start, ma'am? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I have prepared some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go one by one. Okay. And af after that, maybe uh, uh, people can ask questions from you. Oh, sure. See that, then we can, I can answer okay. that. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Start. Okay. Uh, first question uh, I have chosen: How to be a proper student? How to be a proper student? One, uh, listen to your guru and then practice regularly every day yes sincerely yeah without without uh what you say expecting that in, in so many days i will i will achieve this i will achieve that no. just learn because you want to learn properly yeah. then after that everything will follow yes but if you if you learn with the goal of oh I want to get on stage in three years five years then that's not the way to learn. Yeah. You have to learn because you want to learn the subject and do well. Then after that everything is all this. If uh, a, a student is to uh, object and a guru, mm. will be the best thing to do. I didn't hear you properly. Can you repeat the question? If a student is to choose a subject from music, including uh, within that, uh, like yeah. vocal music, tabla, sitar, violin, and uh, he has to choose a guru. So, uh, how is the best way to do that? Is it uh, a, first, is you learn, first, you learn a bit of vocal music. That's a must. Then, that's a must. And then uh, decide on which instruments you like to learn and go from there. And it is always better to be a master of one instrument than be yes. a chair of none. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. So, uh, uh, so if uh, I will connect in the next question with this one, uh, as you can see, this, uh, acceptance acceptance of guru and to the garana so once your guru accepts you then you are accepted in the garana yeah are there any customs within that procedure uh, 
there is a custom called uh, Gandha Bandha. You must have seen a picture on my Facebook where you have ties a thread on your hand, accepting you as his disciple. Yes, that is the one. This one. And then he says something in your ear which is only for you. You're not supposed to say it out. And, uh -huh. and then uh, you are supposed to give a, a, a coconut and uh -huh. and some, maybe one one rupee or something. You know, whatever you can as you yeah. are to the guru. Yes. And uh, the guru gives you uh, jaggery, mm -hmm. and you know that black. Uh, what is that called? Like beans, black beans. That's natural. Yeah. He gives you that. Uh, so saying that uh, your practice should be like to bite the beans. It is very hard, right? Yes. Yeah. Like that. So much of practice you should do so that your music is as sweet as the jaguar. Yes. Okay. So then he feeds you that. Yeah. So, uh, if, uh, so what, whatever the guru is giving you as a blessing, that is told in your book. Uh, okay. That's the Ganda Bandhana. Uh, during Ganda Bandhana, after he ties the thread, he says something in your ear. And that is considered to be like. Yes. Uh, it comes true, they say. Whatever he yes. says. So, so Gandam Bhatna is uh, specific to one student at one time, is it? Yes. That Guru yes. decide when to take uh, the student as his uh, as his student. That is up to yes. the Up to the Guru. After that, you are in the Gharam. Okay. And then more than that, you have to assimilate or the style of the gharana. That is more important than anything. Tradition. Yes. Whatever are the features of the gharana. Yes. You have to bring that in your music. Then you become one with the gharana. What is the point of the guru accepting you? And if you do not pick up the features of the gharana, if you cannot bring that in your music, then you don't belong. Whatever he does, you don't belong to that gharana. If uh, somebody may think that uh, imitating the guru is uh, called the gharana tradition, is it true or is it wrong? See, in the beginning, uh, my guru used to say, when a child is born, it goes after the father and the mother, right? Yes. So similarly, when you learn in the beginning, you will naturally copy your guru. Yes. But later on, you, uh, because of your uh, practice, your musical influences, and your experience of performance and everything, your music starts diversifying and it becomes your own style yeah it is similarly as a child you blindly do what your father or mother says later on you have a mind of your own and you grow up and you do whatever you want the same thing with this so if you say that he's imitating his guru yeah to a certain time yes that is what will happen that should have a that should happen. After that, you have to build your own. Yeah. That means uh, after time he's uh, having more experiences uh, and he will contribute to the Garana too. In other yes. ways. Yes. Yes. Following the features of the Garana, the uh, student will also have... You know, it is like, I look like my father. Yes. But I am my own person. Yeah. That is what I will look. I will have all the pictures that the gharana has. But I will be doing my own. That's my true. music will have all that. 
but it will be my own music even though it has all those there will be something original that means students should, students should learn to protect their tradition and to have a unique uh, style of your own your own okay yes shall we move on to the next one ma'am yes are there any questions anybody has still not uh, hi ma'am namaste uh everybody is written namaste ha satya vijay vikram chandula herat anuja varunskar ishani abhitunga still there are no questions mm. okay next uh, i have uh, mevathi garanen its uh, influence on violin ah uh, so mevathi garana is one garana which has both the vocal and the instrumental strings instrumental stream you have sitar actually yeah. and uh, how violin came about Uh, is because I started learning under Pandit Jaisalaj, and uh, so basically you. I picked up the vocal style, not the instrumental style. Sitar style I did not pick up. I pick up the I picked up the nice. vocal style from Pandit Jaisalaj. So yes. you are the first one to basically start playing violin under me. I am thinking around. Yes. So, uh, could you give some examples, ma'am, of uh, of uh, some sitar players uh, who are from Mevathi Garana? You have heard of this great sitar player, Ustad Rais Khan. Yes, ma'am. Yes. He is yes. from the. Yeah. So, some people say that uh, Imadad Khan or Ethava Garana, like something like that, uh, Rais. No, no, but Rais Khan is actually from Mevathi. Okay. Mevat is actually a place in India. Mevat, it's in Mevat. It's a place in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the the what do you say? The person who started this gharana was in the court of Jodhpur. Jodhpur court. Jodhpur. Jodhpur. Yes. It is also in Rajasthan. Oh, does Gharana stick any musicians to a particular frame? No, it does not stick any musicians to a particular frame. It is like I said, you are the uh, son of your fa uh, father, so you there is something, some commonality between your father and you. But apart from that, you are your own person. Yeah. So Gharana is the father, and the musician is the son. i hope it is clear yes so this mevathi gharana was started by one ustad ghagge nazir khan and uh, he taught his i think he taught his nephew and yes you have it there yes yes see ghagge nazir khan sir so he taught his nephew ustad munawar ali khan okay and then also uh, pandit nathulal oh, chiman lal and nathulal and chim pandit nathulal son was pandit motiram who was the father of pandit jasraj and pandit maniram was jasraj ji's brother mm -hmm. and pandit jyoti ram was mo pandit moti ram's brother yes and what is the difference between gwalior and what are the salient features of gwalior gharana violin which is playing gwalior gharana will follow whatever are the salient features of mevathi gharana i will follow Yeah. Uh, how many violin gharanas present as of today? Uh, 
there aren't any specific gharanas only for violin ma'am right no i don't think there are any gharanas specific for violin yeah. they only in the vocal gharanas yes so uh, andik pratap narayan uh, was uh, andik pratap narayan is pandit jisad ji's elder brother elder brother okay yeah and this chart shows the how they learned i think that yes. so from pandit moti ram pandit mani ram pandit pratap narayan they all learned yes. and from pandit mani ram uh, jasrat ji learned actually okay hmm. okay we'll move to the next one there uh characteristics of mevati gharana singing so basically uh, in indian music prior to pandit jasraj no artist gave importance to the words of composition of the music sorry so, ma'am i didn't no catch artist, no artist gave importance to the words of the composition or yeah. the meaning of the words okay so all the compositions because it was passed from one generation to another nothing was written down yeah. so it is like when you start talking it becomes colloquial yes and then sometimes the meaning of the, the original uh, whatever people said is lost yes like some some proverb or something somebody may have said but as it changes it, during the time yeah it keeps changing changing and in the end the meaning itself is different from what was first said yeah so that happened with the or with all yes. the words in the composition so pandit jasraj what he did was he researched and he, he corrected all this first and then he sang the right words of the composition and therefore the expression in music was better because with words you are and with the music then words yes. and music join together and the expression is even better yes which is why he is considered i would say according to me nobody is as expressive as him when they sing yes, and indeed. then and then clarity in in uh, this in in speech if you listen to old artists singing you won't understand what words they say but if you listen to his singing you will understand each and every word of what he is singing it's an every syllable yeah yes and then mevati gharana itself has gives equal importance to melody and rhythm and uh, there is equal importance for akar and sargam singing so it is the most balanced gharana like for example uh, if you take uh, agra gharana they do not have any sargam singing for that matter jaipur atri also more of akar singing yes so this ha- this is a very very balanced gharana and more uh, spiritually inclined yeah so that is what it is so and very very pres- very precision oriented as far as uh, sur is concerned everything yeah if may uh, i i uh, i may suggest like this uh, what kind of ala uh there are alap types tan types and lots uh, of ornamentation in the music ornamentations so uh, because even when uh, i was a child when i listened to him and uh, i also used to like kishori amankar a lot my my uh, 
thinking at that time when I was a child was if music was so beautiful, this is what I wanted in life. So that's what I did. So, um, like, uh, if I give an example, in Gwalia, they are they are mostly sing Nong To Malap and something like uh, Drupad. Yes. Mostly yeah. there. In Mayavati, what is the basically uh, commonly used? Art it's type? a khayal oriented uh, 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 this thing. Even in Mayavati, we sing Nong To Malap, but mm. not on. But I would say uh, maybe at home for practice or like that, but not on stage. Yeah. So, and but, also, what is the difference between Gaiki and Dattari style and its relationship to Garana? We have that question on. Uh, yeah, it is coming. Somebody is asked yeah. here. Yeah, we'll come. So, uh, yeah. So, ma'am. Uh, are there any special ornamentation that is specifically sung only in Mevati Gara? Nothing like that. It's up to the artist and the artist's, uh, uh, artist's ideas, thoughts. It's not uh, bounded with rules and regulations? It's no, no. With freedom? Yeah. Uh, so next thing, uh, adding to this one, is, uh, are there any unique uh, singing genres and special ragas only specific to Mevati? Yeah, there are many uh, ragas specific to Mevati Garana. One is a very, very old raga called Nat Narayan. Then Shuddha Bharadi, that is one. Then uh, Nagadhan Kanada. Mm -hmm. Three. Then... Uh, Gyan Kali is one. Then uh, what is that? Todi. Jayavanti Todi. Jayavanti Todi. Five. Yeah, so there are quite a few ragas which are. Kamaj Bahar. Kamaj Bahar, yes. Shuddhanat. Shuddhanat, yes. Yeah. And uh, are there any special singing styles like Khayal, Thumri? I never heard to uh, Panditji. No, Thumri is there in Mevati Garan. Only because I said it is spiritually oriented. Okay. It is not. It's more of love songs. Romantic. Know. Yeah. Romantic. So no romanticism in Mevati Garan. Basically. More romanticism is in the, in the music, in the ornamentations, in the expression. Not in lyrics. Not in the lyrics. Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll move to next one. What is the difference between Gayaki and Gatkari and its relationship to the Gharanas? Let me finish that one before we okay, go. Okay, I'll come to that one then. Okay. This is the question. Means I have to, uh, that differ Gatkari and Gayaki. Okay. Gayaki means The style of singing. Gatkari means the style of playing. So Gatkari is something where you have no words. Dirdirdana, dada dada, that sitar, sarod, all, all plucked instruments use Gatkariya. Why? Because they cannot sustain the notes like you can sustain by with the voice. Yeah. Why do I play Gaikiyam? Because I bow and I can sustain the note. Yeah. Which a sitar or a sarod cannot do. Yeah. The same thing is for so probably is for us on Esraj. Many yeah. people go with yes. Tadr Dara and we are doing on Sarangi style. Yes, Sarangi style, you don't, you, you, there is no Gatkari in that. It is all yeah. Gaikiyam. And its relationship to gharanas, it depends whether it is an instrumental gharana or a vocal gharana. Yeah. So there are a lot of instrumental gharanas, there are a lot of vocal gharanas. So which you gharana? Will on, uh, instrumental gharana, so student feel. Then you will play gatkari. But yeah. if you uh, uh, join a vocal gharana, then you play gaiki. And gaiki. most of the instruments which do not have, which are plucked, 
they will all play only that carry because they cannot sustain the note like a bow, bow would do or like a flute would do or you know like that so uh, really gatkari angi is mostly played on uh, as i think uh, myhar yes yeah. oh, next question How can we develop the gaiki ang on the violin can we do it by imitating the vocals yes you can uh, do by imitating vocals but for that you need very good technique otherwise it will not sound good just by imitating a vocal you don't know which finger to use what to use properly then that that way you cannot reproduce what a voice is doing so properly it will not happen if you are not uh, learning under guru yes nowadays uh, many students including us we try to learn from youtube and everything we heard youtube and all you can do after a certain point of time but beginning yes. you have yes. to learn yeah. from a guru yeah and uh, okay I'll so for students of violin if you want to learn start a there are about 8 to 10 of you all i am willing to teach on uh, online so once a week i can see you all that's a you have in sri lanka yes in sri lanka so i will i can teach you all online if you wish i'll manage that then i'll let you know yes 10 who have how many ever want to come I will be online. I can teach you. Okay, I'll make yes. a group and I'll inform you. Yes. Okay. We are coming back to. How to maintain a proper Riyaz schedule? Don't you all uh, get up in the morning, brush your teeth at a certain time? Eat at a certain time. Eat breakfast at a certain time. Lunch at a certain time. When yeah. you do all that, why can't you maintain your riyas also at a particular time? And for that, if you make it a point, then you can do it for forty days at a step without a break. Then forty-first day onward, you will not need anybody to tell you. That time you will. Just sit for practice. Yeah. So start at how many hours that you suggest? Uh, I think to start with, you should go about doing uh, one and one, one and a half hours at one go. So do once in the morning. Once in the evening. Once in the evening. So that will mean about three hours. Yeah. And then later on, if you can, you can add one more, one and a half hours, four and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, that you can, uh, and maybe one and a half can go to two. So when it goes to two hours at one stretch, two, two, yeah. two, six hours. That's enough. Yeah. But consistent practice. One day you do six, and the second day you don't practice at all. That's of no use. Yeah. So uh, mostly people in uh, in Sri Lanka, most people do practice like they perform on stage. They are not doing on techniques or something like that. So um, I think uh, you might uh, want to speak about that a bit. For technique, you have to learn from a guru. There are certain yeah. exercises which you have to learn, and you have to learn the rag from the guru and. Uh, Only then yeah. you will learn. And then uh, yeah. Satya is asking, how are you playing without the sound of finger shifts? I have seen you doing it. Please share the secret. Start learning from me, then I'll tell you. It is not something I can talk over in a Facebook live in two minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go to next one. Influence of Carnatic music in your playing. 
See, I belong to a South Indian family. Mm -hmm. I have listened to a lot of Carnatic music in my childhood. I do not think I have a Carnatic influence in my play because when I play in North India, nobody points a finger and says, oh, she's got a Carnatic touch in her music. Okay. Because if that was it, they would they would have, they would have talked about it very early because in India, especially in North India, to accept a South Indian is very difficult. And I have been accepted wholeheartedly, so I think you yeah. think I play your Hindustani music. So this yes. influence of dramatic music in my playing, no, I don't think it's there. Could you uh, explain? Just uh, because, just because I play the violin, people tend to associate with me with Carnatic music. Uh, I'm a South Indian, and then I'm playing the violin because violin is not played in South India. Yeah. yeah. So, ma'am, this is uh, Nara Nayaji, I think. Yes, my grandfather. My grandfather. Could you tell uh, some uh, background about this? and your relationship and your family you my see. grandfather my i am the seventh generation in my family in Malaysia. my grandfather my great grandfather was a court musician in the court of heaven for kerala mm -hmm. we all hail from kerala my mm -hmm. family and uh, six uh, no, Four generations before my grandfather was, uh, they were court musicians. Mm -hmm. And then when court, uh, this thing stops, you know, when uh, India got independent, they yeah. all became, I mean, what is it, became musicians in the country. Independent music. Uh, yeah, my uncle, my father's elder brothers. Professor T. N. Krishnan in Carnatic music, and my father's younger sister is Dr. N. Rajan in Hindustani, and of course, then I am the next generation. Okay. My grandfather was the one who taught me completely. Okay. He started as first guru. Yes, first guru. And till I was, I learned from him till he, uh, till about he was 94, 95 years old. Okay. Then, uh, then I joined Paduchas. Okay. Uh, have you learned under your aunt or not? Uh, she was in the family. So I, Sometimes I've sat with her and learned something from her, but mm -hmm. not, uh, not really like, you know, being accepted and learning from okay. her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next thing. Influence of vocal music in my playing, that's because yeah. I learned under a vocalist. Okay. And I play the vocal style on the instrument. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if I'm asking like this, so how long uh, must you learn vocal music before you come to an instrument? First, so, uh, you have to learn instrumental technique. Yeah. At the same time, you have to learn vocal music, singing vocal music. Mm -hmm. Then you start applying those, using those techniques to play vocal music on the violin. Yeah. Yeah, and then you will have to evolve. Sometimes you, uh, you might have to bring changes in technique. Mm -hmm. So that you, you, you do uh, once you have, uh, you have mastered the technique. Yeah. Then you know the idea how to change it. Yeah. yeah. To express your emotions, sometimes you have to change the techniques. Yes. Yes. We have another question. Uh, I'll show it. 
Do you use Western techniques while playing a rag? If yes, what techniques you mostly use? Uh, not in the... Uh, the only technique I use is using the whole bow, which unfortunately I find all musicians, first of all, they hold the bow like this. Very yeah. wrong way of holding. It should be yeah. held very nicely. And it should... The bow should be played like this, not like this. This is what people do. So yeah. they're using the whole shoulder no. and they're no. not going to this corner of the bow. Only a passion. Yeah, yeah. so basically uh, they are more towards the up bow and they are not on the down bow. So down bow they have to play fully. When you play fully, you're working this muscle here. Yeah. And when you play this way, you're you're using your wrist. I hope I can show you. You're using your wrist here when you do this. Yeah. Like this is the wrist that you're... So the playing is with the wrist and not with this whole hand. But when you're doing this, you're using from your shoulder. This is what you do. I have seen many students hold the bow like this. Yeah, and then play like this. Yeah. Yes. This is very, very wrong. Because this you're using your whole arm, shoulder, and you will never get speed. This one, yeah. you're using your wrist, and this is what will give you speed. Yeah. And then, of course, some bowing techniques like spiccato and all I use in my music, but that is when I'm playing jhala. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we discussed about uh, this, and uh, we have a next one. Is impromptu bandish or that considered a high skill or talent? Definitely, if you can make a bandish then and there, then it is a talent, right? It is high skill. Could you give us some example? It is, it is not high skill actually. You may be highly skilled, but you cannot. You have to be. You should have that extra something in you uh, to be a uh, like uh, not only a musician but also uh, a poet or something like that. You have to be both. Vageka. Vageka. Yes. You have to be a vageka. So, uh, if I invite you to for an impromptu gut, would you do us the honor? Impromptu gut? For that, you have to be in the mood. Right now, I'm, I'm not <laughs> thinking about that. You know, when you are suddenly you're sitting and it might come to you. It has come to me many times and I've made also. But yeah. there, there is, it, it happens when it has to happen. You can't force it to happen. That is yeah. the thing. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to add something. Uh, if uh, students try to make impromptu bandhi show gut before they learn the rag properly, that will be no, 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 no. That is wrong. You cannot do all that. You have to first learn the rag and uh, everything. I mean, yeah. uh, you have to get to a certain level of proficiency in the art, in the medium. Yeah. Before you can do all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, we have the last question. Your favorite raga and uh, your new inventions? My, all ragas are my favorite. There is nothing <laughs> like my favorite raga or anything. Whatever, whichever raga, appears before me at that time. That is my favorite raga. So, Do you have any specific, just a teeny tiny one rag that you might? No, no. <laughs> I don't have anything like that. I have uh, a lot of ragas. Whichever raga appears before me and uh, decides to, you know, give me a vision. That raga is my favorite for that period of time. 
So if I change a question like this, uh, what are the ragas you don't play on your violin or your gara? That will be easy to answer. Uh, it is not that I don't play. It's just that sometimes the timings are not right. Otherwise, I can play every raga on my violin. But there's so the concert timings. Mind. Concert timings, like for example, I have uh, at home. I practice so many ragas, which I don't play on stage because the timings are not right to play those. Like afternoon ragas, I have never played dhani on stage. But dhani, I know very well. I have never played uh, uh, what is it, uh, gauti on stage. But I gauti, I play very well. Like there's so many ragas out there. Yeah. So, Marga, yeah. I played only once or twice in my life. <laughs> I have played uh, like that Shri, I have, uh, you know, those timings don't come to me. It, mine comes a little later. So, and even in uh, uh, Kannada, uh, Darbari Kannada, I know I played. But if you ask me if I played uh, uh, Hussein in Kannada, I know the rag very well. I have played Shahana Kannada, but I have not played Usaini Kannada. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. In, uh, the thing is, ma'am, in Sri Lanka, the, the singing time theory, it is not well maintained. So, people play or sing any rag at any time. So, the mood will not come as, uh, in my view. So, in uh, your view, I think you maintain that very well. So that's the thing you don't play. I think it's all more uh, mentally conditioning yourself. I have conditioned my mind that ah, this is to be played at this time. This time. And yeah. there's a, you know, you follow a, a rule which has been created. So I am following the rule, that's all. But there are people who play all rounds at all times. Yeah. And there are people who say, uh, what do you know? You are sitting inside an auditorium. What time? How does it matter? What time it's outside? <laughs> yeah. So some you have changed the strings of the violin, removing E string and tuning to a different string. What made you do it? The reason I did that was because uh, with the E string, you are tuning the violin to a very high pitch. It's hard and to when you have to play three hours of music at a very high pitch, it's hard on the ears, according to me, not to, according to others. I wouldn't want to listen to something so high pitched. So I wanted the violin to sound mellow. So I brought down the pitch, I took off the instrument. Yeah, I think you have and asked those, in some previous yeah. also. Both male and female vocalists. Is it okay if we listen to both? You can listen to male and female. Nobody is stopping you. You can listen to whomever you want. But uh, yeah, that, that does. The matter. best example you can take Kalamam. He has learned at the male vocalist, so nothing has yeah. changed. Nothing. Yeah. So, uh, ma'am, could you uh, give some points about uh, your favorite artists uh, that you? Uh, like uh, you had uh, influence, who had influenced your music journey? Uh, Pandit Jasradji himself, my guru. Then, uh, then uh, Vidushi Kishori Amonkar has influenced me a lot. I love her music. Then, uh, I think these are the two people whom awesome. I really like. Yeah. And then Jagdish Prasad, Pandit Jagdish Prasad, he's not very well known, but he's a very good singer. I like his is, music. Is it related He's no more, he's no more, but he's from the Patiala Garana. But he's a brilliant okay. singer. Jagdish Prasad is his name. Is it related to Mani Prasadji? I know, I don't think so. Then I also like. Uh, uh, I like the compositions of uh, Pandit Jitendra Abhishek. Jitendra Abhishek Ji. 
Pandit Singh. I like his compositions very much. Then I like Rasik Lalan, Pandit Rasik Lalan, Dharia singing. He is also no more. Okay. Okay. Apart from, of course, Amin Khan Sahib, Bade Gula Malik Khan Sahib, Nazakat Salamat Ali Khan Sahib, then Roshnara Begum, all mm -hmm. these people, old people I've like, listened to a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, who was the greatest musician that uh, you met in your life, uh, other than Panditji himself, uh, in your childhood, that uh, made you, oh God, I met this one, this uh, fabulous person? That made you think? I met a lot of musicians in childhood. They are all great. There is nothing that one is greater than the other. Pandit yeah. yes. Bhansan Joshi was uh, meeting him was something big for me. Then Ustad Zakir Hussain and Ustad Alora Khamasa when I met them. Yeah. Yes. And Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasia. Then um, Pandit B.G. Job, Malavika Kanan, A.P. Kanan, yeah, yes. So uh, have you uh, spoke with uh, Job Sab uh, about violin? Yes. yes. He listened to me play when I was just seven years old. Oh. So he listened to me play Mia Malha. Yeah. And you seven, you played Mia Malha. Yes. That's something interesting. Yeah. Yes. The same questions are coming again. What? Uh, how many? <laughs> and what they? Uh, no, that's okay. We won't do that again. Yeah, you have to be more specific than what gharana, vocal, or tabla. Anything you haven't mentioned that. There are too many gharanas. Yeah. I if, give, I play is, What do you mean? For, what is difference? My style is Gaiki. Gaiki is what you play when you sing. The same reproduced on the instrument is called Gaiki. Uh, I quote this picture. Yeah. This is a... This is a few months ago in Bombay. He had come to listen to me. My guru had come to listen to me. Okay. Just after the concert. It's uh, Ramdas Palsaji on the right side, I think. Yeah, he was on tabla with me. Yeah. Okay. I have collected some photos. Uh, I found that. And this is, I think, uh, Pandit Mani Ramji. Uh, for students who haven't seen, this is uh, elder brother of Pandit Jasraji. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ma'am, I have, I have the story from you, I think, uh, that uh, Adana Bandish was sung by Pandit Maranji for... He composed it. And it was written by Jaiman Singh Maghilaji. <coughs> yes. So, the uh, story goes that Pandit Maniranji had lost his voice. Mm -hmm. So, the Maharaja of Sanand was a great uh, believer in uh, Goddess... Uh, Kali. So, and then he wrote this composition, and uh, he he told him that on he called him on a particular day, and he said you are going to sing today. So he said, how can I sing my own voice? So he said, Maharaj, give her, give you her voice, and that is when he sang this composition, composed this song. Yeah, that's a fascinating story to students that mysterious things that music can do. Yeah. And uh, it's Panditji. And uh, I think uh, Panditji and you both are uh, worshippers of Lord Vishnu. Yeah. Is there something uh, related to Mehmati Garana with uh, Lord Vishnu and Goddess Kali? Mm. Uh, the goddess Kali and Vishnu, uh, I mean, the female form and the male form. So Vishnu, the female form is Vaishnava. Yeah. 
So we believe in both. So, so Panditji, uh, usually, uh, <coughs> sorry, frequently sing uh, Bandish and Bhajan mostly to Lord Vishnu. Yes, Lord Vishnu and uh, even Kali. And uh, this, uh, I think, Pandit Pratap Naranji. Is he still? Uh, oh, he's not alive. Okay. Just a sec. Okay. So any? Uh, okay. We have a new question. Okay. I think it's over. Yeah. Very yeah. thank for your contribution on social media for music. I have never missed your Facebook live. Thank you, ma'am and Kamakali. Okay, Chandula, thank you for joining with us. Yes. Uh, so, I invite ma'am to speak anything. So, no. I would uh, uh, request all of you to support Pamalka and his initiative and please join his uh, the good work he's doing through his institute. Sasani Institute of Music and uh, all of you please learn music that's my request thank you all and hope hey. to see you some, somewhere sometime yes and my yeah. offer if there are students who want to learn I can teach online but it will not be one on one it will be a group yeah. okay group at once or oh, uh, like this session, Zoom. Yes. So uh, we would love to have you back in Sri Lanka on stage. Or yeah. works, or on stage. So I hope this uh, after these pandemic times, we would have time to uh, do our sure. journey. Yeah. And uh, Sri Lanka has a lot of uh, uh, students of music. I saw when I came uh, two, three months ago, yeah. Gayani and Dhanushka had my, yeah. arranged my concerts. That's when I met you, and you yeah. traveled with me all over wherever I went. We like yeah. till you left me at the airport. So uh, I saw how many students were there who wanted, and I did two workshops in in uh, Candy. I think I had about 45, 50 students. Yeah. And in in Colombo, uh, I had how much? Eighty or hundred? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighty or hundred students. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think that's yeah. the highest I've had people come to learn. Uh, you know, Indian there are more. Ma'am, the the question is uh, coming to Colombo is somewhat difficult to more students. So if you have yeah. a more days, so more students will come to learn. Yeah, so I am. I was so happy to see uh, so much of interest in music, and uh, I had said that I will come again and again to teach if this is the kind of you know interest. So yes, so my offer still stands. Those who want to learn, get in touch with Pamalka, and Pamalka will arrange a session with me, sure. and I will teach. Yes. As you mentioned, I would like to uh, pay my gratitude to Danushka sir, uh, yeah. Ganmi, and Kalum sir for introducing me to Kalam uh, and uh, our director of music in Sri Lanka, Dr. Nishad Adun Patrana sir, my Guruji. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are thankful to Kalam for spending her time, valuable time with us on this pandemic time. So we are halfway around the world. You are in uh, San Francisco, I think. So yes. Yeah. And everybody can watch this and everybody has learned something. And there are uh, many comments. It's a great pleasure to listen to these important words from such a great artist like Guru Kala Ramnath, ma'am. Thank you so much, dear Guruji, for arranging a live session and very important to students like us who are interested in and uh, in love with Indian music, hope that we all have a great session as today very soon. 
Yes. And Thank so, you all. Okay. Thank you all. And uh, Thank you so much for your activity. So we'll yeah. have a session soon. Uh, yes. You will and, have uh, my hello to uh, Danushka and Daini. I haven't seen them in a long time. So yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for spending your valuable time with us, ma'am. And hope well, you all and the family will stay safe. And uh, we'll see you yes, soon. Yes, thank, thank you for coming to our Sasani Facebook Live. Thank you, yes. ma'am. Namaskar. 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 Okay, that was uh, Srimati Kala Ramnath, ma'am, with us today. Uh, on Sasani Facebook Live Interview 1 of inaugural program. So I hope uh, you have learned uh, many things. Uh, we discussed uh, about 10 questions and more, and you have asked many things. So I hope this will uh, be published on my Facebook page of our institute, Sasani Institute for Music. So hope to see you again soon. So please spread music, spread love, spread joy, and stay safe. And hope to see you uh, again soon with Sasani Facebook live interview session two. Thank you. Namaste. Aibuha.